This is Brian Alvarez, and I am commanding you to check out In Your Head Radio on InYourHeadOnline.com. Mary, Mary, I tell you to come to my room, but I already got a, I already got a <laughs> Teresa Joyner coming out. <laughs> and uh, my wife's my wife's not here right now, so I got I got to make sure she's in the archive show. Well, maybe you could come to Intro in our in our room. You know. Well. I, <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate you answering my questions. I hope you have a great night, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people trying to get on. So, thank you very yep. much. Uh, thanks a lot for calling in. Come thanks. Bye bye. Come up and say hello to me, Mary, when you come to San Francisco. Okay, I, I promise I will. All right. Good night. Thank you for calling. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, you know, earlier you talked about uh, Shawn Michaels. Um, you know, people still talk about those matches, still remember them. Uh, yeah. What did you think at the time when they were going on? Did you know, like, this was really good stuff? Well, I knew right away when I worked with him when I went to Minneapolis. Him and Whitey Gennetti were a tag team. And, and I, I was, Ed Wyskowski is a very good friend of mine. And he was Colonel with the Beers at the time. And he was my favorite tag team partner because we were the world tag team champions on the West Coast for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, I asked Ed, I said, geez, I wish I ended up being with Doug Summers, who was a great worker, too, but Doug and I both were the bleach blondes, so they burned, put us both together, and we had Sherry Martell as our valet, and hell of a gal, too. She's going to be at the Wrestle Fan Fest. And the thing about, um, uh, I wanted Ed Wyskowski really as my partner, because I never had a better partner than Ed, And but he was in the middle of an angle with Jimmy Snuka, who we got into the AWA. Both him and I were the ones that put the word in for Jimmy to get him into the AWA because he had left New York after the problems that happened in New York. And um, Snook and I go way back to the early 70s and with Ed Wyskowski. And it just, it just, uh, it just, when he got in the ring, I said to Ed, I said, what's this, because uh, Ed was there before I was. I said, Ed, what's Michaels and Gennetti, what are they like? And he said, they're, they know everything you call. They know what to do and they know how to do it and they're naturals. And I was like, great and he said they're a night off too and i was like great and so basically the program i did for the whole year with them anything i called they just knew how to do it and they were excited to work every single night and they worked their asses off they bought i bought the best out of them they bought the best out of me and doug and basically it was a great run and a lot of people remember the bloodbath in las vegas and a lot of the matches that were we were on the espn network at the time mm-hmm. have and, you uh, yeah go on Sean, my, remembers that it was a great run too it was his first big push mm-hmm. well was he uh thankful to you like uh, afterwards well i got a picture hanging right here on my wall it's for Shawn michaels when we were in dallas texas two years ago doing an autograph session it says buddy you were um you were truly very inspirational in the um in the um uh he's i'm trying to read the exact words here from a distance you were inspirational in my Success in professional wrestling um, in the early part of my career and the rest of my career. Thank you very much for everything. Love, Shawn Michaels, HBK. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, I've got a lot of one from Terry Von Eric saying that, that those were some of the best years of his life when we when I trained him and wrestled him. And then uh, I got one from Jimmy Hart, one from Stacy Keebler, and uh, Missy Hyatt, and a few others that are around the room here, Roddy Piper, Andre the Giant. That's just, it's kind of like a little museum right here in the computer room. Mm-hmm, cool. So, so you still collect stuff. Is there some of the stuff that you had, like, in the closet you decided to sell on eBay? I did some of the better pictures I liked that my wife put in frames, and we just hung them up in this one room. I Because when you walk in my house, you wouldn't know unless you came in the computer room. You wouldn't know the, about the wrestling unless you came into the, like, uh, it's when the cable guy comes to the house or the direct TV, I mean, when they come to the house and put in a TiVo or something, they go, holy cow, look at all this stuff. And they go, they just go crazy. And they, they know who I am when they come. I, I can't go anywhere in the Northwest because everybody knows who I am. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, that's okay, but everybody's very nice and respectful. They always go, thanks for their memories, or I'm standing in line at, at any store or any place or walking through a mall or just anywhere at a stoplight. Somebody will roll, say, roll your window down, roll your window down, because I drive a... Lincoln Town Car, and I got Direct TV in my car, mm-hmm. and I got um, I can get anything I get at home. I get HBO, everything, a perfect picture anywhere in the country. And so people will actually tell me to wave, roll down my window, and just say, "Hey, thanks for the memories." And they're, they're very respectful out here. Well, that's cool. 
Uh, have you yeah. seen the AWA uh, DVD that WWE put out? Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen. I've been on the twenty four seven network a lot of times, and and for like a month at a time, and a lot of different matches. And um, it's funny, it's because I'm out of wrestling. I'm still still on TV all the time. I'm like, you just you, even when you get out, you still get on there because they they give you that publicity. And when they play your uh, videos from the days from the eighties and the seventies. There you are, you know, and, and it's like you're back up on on a DVD and, and you're on a 24-7 network that they refurbished the tape and they got the tape and it, it looks great and it looks like it was just done yesterday. Yeah, a whole, a whole new generation gets to see, you know. Um, Stuff that they, you know, the younger generation gets to see the old school wrestling. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, and that's when wrestling was, four, like Pat Patterson said, remember when it was four lights in a ring, kid? And I said, yep. He said, now look at it. Saw bells and whistles. <laughs> Right. You go to, go to a Raw, Monday Night Raw, and you see an hour and 40 minutes of interviews, and you see 20 minutes of wrestling. In our day, you saw an hour, hour and 40 minutes of wrestling and 20 minutes of interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What do you think about the interviews now? They say most of them are scripted. Would, would oh, you? Yeah. I never, if you've got to use a script, um, I'll give you another Shawn Michaels story. I was with him at the Rose Garden about a year ago, and I said, Shawn, I said, what is the deal? Everybody's practicing in the ring in the afternoon. He goes, I know. He goes, they wanted me to practice with Chris Benoit. I said, it's not in my contract. I said, I know how to work. And I just burst out laughing. I, I burst out. It sounds like a Woody Woodpecker. I said, <laughs> I said, Sean, I said, are you still there? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hearing some kind of a connection. Oh, there, I thought, yeah, I didn't know what that was. I thought that was something you were doing. No, I'm, I'm hearing a <laughs> It sounds like a Woody Woodpecker. Right yeah, now. right. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't know what, this, what was going on. Yeah, I never Sean, heard that one before. <laughs> Sean, Sean was talking to Ed Muskowski and I in the back during the catering time, and we were down there talking to everybody, and, and he, I was saying, Sean, are you going to go out there and practice? He says, no, you know I don't have to. And because in the day when we wrestled, I didn't see my opponents sometimes until I got in the ring. Whether I flew in or I drove in or I got there by anything that smokes, a bus or a train, Whenever I got to the building, I didn't see my opponent until I got in the ring. I just knew who was going to win and who was going to lose. Nobody told me how to get from point A to point Z. I just knew the finish, and then we just played it. Because when you got a script, it's the worst freaking thing you can have, and even today. Because if you're driving, it's like driving a car. If you're, if you're scripted to go down a certain road, and you've got to turn the other road, and you got to go down the other road, and, but you've got an audience watching, you can't change you can't change directions if you know it's not working. Right. So when you're working a match and you're telling a story and you're using psychology and you know how to do all that stuff, like Bob Orton Jr., Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, basically the guys that I grew up with and worked with, when you know how to do that, you can change directions in the middle of a match and make the people buy what you're doing. And you can take them and steer them any direction you want. And that's just being a great wrestler, and that's how you do it. And today when they do a script, if they're not buying it, and the guys only can go by the script, the fans aren't going to get into it, and they're just, you know, they're going to get popcorn, they're going to do whatever, and you can't change directions because you've got to follow a script. Mm -hmm. uh, do you got a question from the board, Incher? Uh, I was actually wondering about the Portland footage. Does any of it still exist? I have the most footage of any Portland wrestling there is, uh, along with a friend of mine named Rich Patterson, who works for the Portland Trailblazers. We, uh, together, we... We put together as many refurbished tapes as we could because Don Owens, the promoter back in the 60s, for 60 years, never taped over another tape. Um, I, I, he taped over every tape week to week on TV, and they were house shows, too. We did Portland 72 times a year. We had Portland specials on a Tuesday night, but every Saturday night was a TV taping and a house show. And if he would have saved the library of those shows instead of, saying, Jesus Christ, it cost me 60 bucks he'd go to keep a tape. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tape over it. He taped over it just like San Francisco did and just like Mike LaBelle did in L.A. They taped over all their old tapes and there's no history except for the ones I taped on a VHS machine back in the early 70s, middle 70s on. Mm -hmm. And then we try to save that and preserve it and then put it on DVD and then we sell it that way and basically that's all we can do because nobody else saved it. And Don Owens I know it was a, promoting was a uh, was a hobby to him. Cattle ranching was his business, right. and that was his big. He was a multi-millionaire, built one of the richest men in Oregon, and but wrestling was just a hobby to him, and promoting.